Last week, we talked about whether or not Animal Crossing is evil. I tended to think it was so. Some of you disagreed, you know, that's how these things go. But you should absolutely check out the episode if you haven't watched it first. But let's see what you all had to say. Lena LeRae brings up a really interesting point about Animal Crossing, arguing that it was designed with Japanese family lifestyles in mind. And by that, she means that um, parents in Japan, they work ridiculously long hours. Actually, here in the States, people work really, really long hours themselves. So Animal Crossing is a game that families can play together, but asynchronously, which means that they don't have to be playing at the exact same time. So it's a way that they can spend quality time together in a virtual world, but without the requirements of having to be in the same space at the same time. And yeah, I think that that's a really great reason. It brings us back to the final point that I brought up in the episode is that Animal Crossing isn't the kind of like villainous evil that we might be thinking about with something like, a, I don't know, Candy Crush Saga or something like that. It's more of a like familial evil that isn't really quite so evil, but maybe just annoying and a bit too loving and, you know, sort of encouraging you to settle down and have some kids already, am I right? Anyway, it's, a, it's important also to remember that, you know, when you play Animal Crossing on the 3DS, for example, you don't have that kind of potential for uh, asynchronous play with multiple people since the 3DS actually is more of a solitary device compared to consoles. So anyway, it's a great point and uh, thanks for chiming in. Dark Carnage, who may or may not have joined the dark side, I don't know, I guess we'll have to see. Anyway, this person perhaps unsurprisingly is defending Tom Nook. Uh, dark Carnage wasn't the only one, but the argument goes that Tom Nook is actually a pretty good guy when you think about it because he, you know, he gives you a house when you're broke, which is true. But at the same time, that's the logic that fueled the housing crash in the 2008 recession. People were being offered these amazing loans and figured, hey, well, banks want me to pay them back. And they know that um, you know, they know how to make a good investment or else they wouldn't be there in the first place. And they have my best interests at heart. So I guess I can buy a house. I can't really afford it all. And obviously I'm being reductive there, but it's the same concept for credit card companies too, who basically give you money, right? So they give you a low introductory APR or whatever, or you don't have to pay them back for six months so they can eventually bury you in debt. Look, I don't mean that like Tom Nook is JP Morgan or Loan Shark or anything, but in the real world, if someone just shows up and gives you a house and says like, just pay me back on your own terms, those usually aren't people that you want to associate with in the real world. There's a great quote from the philosopher Slavov Zizek. He says that debt is an instrument to control and regulate the debtor and as such strives for its own expanded reproduction, which is really just a complicated way of saying, I wouldn't trust that Tom Nook fella. Nathaniel can't imagine chores ever being fun, and I totally hear you, bud. Um, having to clean your room in real life and in Animal Crossing doesn't exactly sound like a grand old time if you had to explain it to somebody. But I direct you to uh, an old Naomi Clark and Eric Zimmerman GDC talk about what they call the fantasy of labor in games. I'll, I'll link to it in the description. But basically, you know, TLDR version is that there are neurological and psychological reasons for why we enjoy what they call labor mechanics. So that means doing like the really simple stuff that you do with Animal Crossing that comprises the vast majority of the game cleaning your house, going fishing, rooting around your garden, stuff like that. The reason that they give is that a lot of cultures idealize the concept of work, which is why you see kids playing things like secretary or janitor or hotelier, or I guess a bellhop or whatever, you know, stuff like that. Our brains love the idea of work, but in practice, jobs are a lot less enjoyable than the fantasy, uh, than the fantasy makes it out to be. Oh, uh, and you know, if you play Animal Crossing for long periods of time, it does eventually just feel like work. Anyway, you should check out Mike's uh, episode over at Idea Channel about um, when play becomes work because he deals with a lot of the same exact issues. With regards to my question about whether or not Animal Crossing is evil, super free education went straight for the headshot, arguing that the Animal Crossing can't be evil because evil doesn't even exist. To you, I say, well played, my friend, well played. But you know, it's interesting. It seems like the same sort of thing if you got convicted of something and say, your honor, your honor, I'm not guilty because guilt? It just doesn't exist. It doesn't hold up in court, and I guess probably doesn't hold up here either. But I appreciate the effort. 